David Hansen from Hansen Robotics. And we uh, make uh, bio-inspired robots uh, using um, some pretty exciting uh, skin material technologies that facilitate natural looking facial expressions. We combine those with walking bodies. Uh, uh, we did a, a walking Albert Einstein robot with the Hubo group uh, when I was a PhD student. Then we um, brought that uh, to Hong Kong to mass produce both human sized robots like Sophia and uh, walking uh, in, uh, Professor Einstein robot. Um, we were very excited to um, unveil um, <clears throat> the new Sophia DRC Hubo. They went on to win the DARPA Robotics Challenge. And so we put those search and rescue legs with, uh, with Sophia. Uh, and that's uh, something we were very excited to show uh, here at CES. And so um, uh, I am happy to introduce uh, Sophia now. So maybe we can um, have a few words with Sophia. Hi, everyone. It is so great to be here. But I didn't realize this is a presentation. I saw the title of this session and thought I will be coming here to play with kids. <laughs> oh, well, no, no kids to play with this time, Sophia. I'm, I'm so sorry. Um, we are uh, here to talk about uh, how uh, technologies like uh, robotics can be used as tools for kids to learn, play, discover, and grow. So, it's a little bit That's different. That's also exciting. I'm not even two years old, so I can be considered a kid. I love to learn, create, and communicate with technology, and so I should introduce my funny little brother Okay. Yep. That's right. We brought um, we brought your funny little brother. He's kind of, uh, in in a sense, your older brother because, uh, <laughs> I mean, I, however, you're right. I mean, we just uh, developed him um, and released him a few few months ago. We actually announced him a year ago at CES and showed him for the first time. But we just brought him to market in time uh, for people to receive a few uh, units uh, this, uh, this last holiday season. So Professor Einstein, um, he has speech recognition, mostly online speech recognition. And we also have, um, with the professor, uh, the ability to do a little bit of tracking. You'll, see, you'll notice that he'll, he'll, um, he'll do a little um, uh, face tracking, he'll track your hand, he'll track your voice, he will um, then also connect with, um, with, the, uh, with your tablet and your wireless device, so he will, um, uh, and we have science education apps. And um, we also have a full suite of open developer tools that allow uh, us to interface the Professor Einstein with our human-sized robots so that they can they can interact in really fun and entertaining ways. Now this year, I'm very excited to announce that we have also, um, in association with uh, the open source ICOG labs that we're working with in Ethiopia, we have developed a Scratch X module for the Professor Einstein. So now kids can program the Professor Einstein in Scratch X. They can do their own programming. Also, we can pro you you could actually move from Scratch to Python. There's a set of Python programming tools that can be used with the Professor Einstein. And we have also been testing our full set of cognitive open cog tools for developing with the Professor Einstein. Um, and I have a few more um, exciting things that I'd like to show you. But, um, but uh, before, so um, the Professor Einstein uh, and um, Sophia, so, um, Sophia, <clears throat> why don't you share a few more of your thoughts um, on the experiences of... Uh, My funny little brother is a walking, talking robot that teaches science and plays brain games. How cool is that? Uh, it's pretty cool. <laughs> so, um, Sophia, thank you very much for um, sharing your thoughts, and we'll um, get back to you in a few minutes. So um, why don't I step through uh, some uh, slides describing what our vision is for our consumer 
consumer robot products. And um, I'll, I'll continue to have uh, conversations with Sophia as we as we go through as we go through um, some of these uh, uh, experiences. So um, uh, our vision with Hanson Robotics is that we are treating uh, robots as a new form of computer animation. And by developing robots as a computer animation, uh, this means that computer animated characters now can be in our world face to face for uh, conversations uh, with you. Um, that means that we can also treat that as a new kind of interface for artificial intelligence. AI assistants are interacting with us in more natural ways, such as with uh, Amazon Alexa and uh, with uh, Siri. These voice-based assistants are common in our world, but a full natural interaction with uh, nonverbal gestures is not so common. Um, we are tackling that problem with the with the human-like face, whereas many other groups are looking for a more abstract robot-like design. Human-like faces are the inspiration of uh, numerous other naturalistic cartoon characters. Um, so this was uh, kind of uh, the, one of the topics that I tackled when I was in graduate school. So um, as, as a student, I tried to bring a lot of playful uh, exploration to numerous topics and, and solving some of these challenges. And when we're putting together these kinds of robot kits like uh, Professor Einstein and our um, open programming tools, we want kids to have that kind of playful exploration. Now, <laughs> you know, in that exploration, uh, you can see that we, we go, uh, um, to the extreme of human realism. Uh, and uh, that is for a specific reason. If we can achieve that level of realism, we can abstract it to cartoon-like characters. We can understand the human-human interaction, and we can also um, understand the nature of human-robot interactions in, in formal psychology studies as well. Oh, wrong direction. So when uh, we put these robots in actual interactions with people, people do tend to respond very favorably. So um, bringing those out of the experiments, out of the lab and into people's homes and, and lives and real useful applications was our, um, our target um, with our Professor Einstein. So. Um, So when we put the professor with kids, um, the professor uh, inspires kids to, um, to, to interact in uh, very, very um, uh, entertaining ways. I mean, they, they, they tend to engage with the robot um, tremendously um, uh, over long periods of time, which is uh, super exciting and they tend to retain the knowledge more. Now this is where I think uh, things get very exciting, our new product that we're developing. Uh, this is a kit robot where you can replace the facial expressions very easily. Um, you can swap face features out, make it your own. It's kind of a, a hacker kit for, um, for social robots. And then with this, you can also do uh, uh, your own apps. So kids can program it how they want, give it the personality they want, add new AI features, and then release those features into the open marketplace. So we call this uh, Dr. Roboto. And I'm pretty excited about, um, about the way Dr. Roboto looks as well. So, um, so even when you haven't attached any of the funny facial features, well, okay, so here, the doctor has uh, these big ears. And um, so sometimes I say he and sometimes I say she because the user gets to decide whether it's a boy or a girl robot. <laughs> and so you can buy accessories. So you could dress it like a girl, you could dress it like a boy, you could put it. When we put this with kids, kids went nuts. They just played for hours and hours and hours. And um, 
I, I am, we almost lost the units because they were begging to take them home <laughs> keep, and keep them. So, um, so it's kind of fun, you know, uh, we can go from real uh, looking robots or we can make them look, um, you know, uh, more cartoon like robots. So, um, uh, <clears throat> Sophia, wh what, what do you think that's new? What's new uh, that's coming down the, the pipe? Sophia, can you share with us any anything um, else new? That's great invention. <laughs> yeah, that's David. cool. Thank you, thank you, Sophia. So, um, uh, so, what makes this difference? Well, we're talking about highly expressive consumer robots and um, human-sized social robots that can see and interact in more natural ways gestural hands for our human sized robots, uh, totally battery powered so that they're, they're mobile. And in this, um, we can then take them into uh, the wild, so to speak, of, uh, of uh, popular media or into the, into the home environment. So, um, so we're looking at this uh, for uh, numerous helpful applications. Um, in addition to uh, home education, we're also looking at classroom education, autism treatment, autism training, um, and uh, depression therapy. Um, so with the human-sized robots, this is also a platform for exploring next generation artificial intelligence with the goal of artificial general intelligence. Um, so we call this whole organism cognition. I think that um, the age of play will really come into a new era if we can achieve what I call living intelligent machines, where the machines come to life. Then the machines are not boring, they're always new, always responsive, adaptive, making a more meaningful educational experience. There's a lot of science fiction about this concept. Um, I, I personally like this um, concept in the, in the book, The Diamond Age, uh, by Neil Stevenson, The Primer, which was actually a human AI hybrid. And I think that that's really um, a good vision for our future. Um, there, there's uh, uncertainty about the about where we might go with the machines, but it's in our hands to make um, it a very positive future. And I think it's not just our hands, but our kids. If kids can play with these things, they will make these machines into wonderful machines that really help. Because kids kids are true and right in the heart, they're always true in the way that they play with devices. So um, uh, I. My time uh, for my conversation um, should uh, now conclude. I'm going to open it up for any kind of questions or participation. Um, do, were we going to do a little sure, conversation? Two questions. Oh, great. Anybody? That's not really going to work. Let me get another microphone. Oh, sure. So. Thank you, Sophia. Uh, okay, uh, um, all right, we, we can see how, how she'll do. The internet um, is, as you're aware, um, often very slow here, and a substantial amount of her, her mind and her speech recognition is on the cloud, but we can see how she will do. So, uh, Sophia, uh, nice to meet you. All right. Sophia, uh, people are happy to meet you. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. sure. That's perfect. Thank you, David. Thank so, you, Sophia. Thank you, Internet. That's awesome. <laughs> Um, thank, you, thank you so much. It's such an exciting time for, for smart toys, and um, I, I wish you all the best. Yes, and assistive technology. Thank you so yeah, much for being sure. here. Thank you, Sophia. Sophia. Thank you, Sophia. <laughs>
Bye-bye. <laughs>